I spilled my plant on this one, so it has soil and water on it. Oh, it was wonderful. It was, I, uh, it's good, it's good. Okay, all right, okay. Let's, let's have a talk, because I have a problem. My belly is full of tiki masala and garlic naan. I'm tired, so I'm gonna make this quick. I am half done with Percy Jackson and the Curse of the Titans. What is it? The Titans Curse? And I'm having a lovely time. Um, I think that so far, I don't know if I'm liking this more than book one. It's, it's in the running. We'll decide in a little while, but I'm having a great time. I'm really loving the addition of characters and the conflict that they bring. Um, I think that that one of this author's strengths is the way he writes his characters. His characters have really strong voices, uh, like Percy, who is a first person uh, narration. He's telling the story. He has such a strong narrative voice. He has such an individual voice and mixed with the humor and the way Percy tells his own story is just very unique and very engaging and just really, really well done. But then any character we face, any character we interact with is just very uniquely themselves. And in this book, we're interacting with new gods. And in book one and book two, we were interacting with, uh, you know, that realm as well but in book three especially I just feel like the voices of the gods that we interact with are are so strong they are you know each god encompasses like the god of wisdom obviously encompasses being wisdomous see that that was clever I'm so smart being wise and um, and he does such a good job of taking that core trait and then adding a personality that is so strong and unique and fun to interact with, uh, whether they're snobby or, for instance, Apollo, what was his name? The Wisdom God's brother. I don't know, man. Here's the thing with these Greek names. <laughs> I'm dyslexic too, so when Percy laments over these names being similar and he can't keep them straight, same friendo, same. Anyway, her brother, uh, hilarious character, and they, he just does such a good job of making their character, of making each character and each really important voice to the story fun. Fun to be around. Unique and different and fun. The conflict that these hunters um, bring, which if you don't know, I, it doesn't matter. This group of women, the conflict that they bring to Percy's life is really interesting because um, you know, there's nothing wrong with them, but they do disrupt really important parts of his life and end up being a barricade that he has to, he has to figure out a way to work with them in order to accomplish the goals that he has to accomplish. And I just love the way this all is sorted out. I just, I think, you know what? It's just really well written. It's just a really well written story. And while I am more into middle grade than I used to be, so I am enjoying all of this a lot more than I used to. And while there are other middle grades that I've picked up recently that grip me, that suit me and my taste a little bit better, I can say that I'm enjoying myself, but then also, even though there are other middle grades that suit my taste a little bit better than this does, I do think that this is one of the best quality middle grades that I've read yeah, probably ever. I'm actually, I'm very, very impressed with the skill of this story, so I'm having a great time. I guess we'll talk more thoughts. That was, that was pretty brief overall. That was pretty good. I'm happy with that. Uh, when I finish it, we'll talk some more. That's how these things work. So I'm very tired. Uh, we'll talk Hunter Hunter now because I'm now at the point where I'm pausing because it's time for me to um, write up notes to do a review. I spilled my plant on this one so it has soil and water on it. I was setting them out to be in the sun and they tipped it. Doesn't matter. Um, so anyway, timestamps if you want to skip this part but we will be talking spoilers for where I am with Chimera Ant. So, um, oh man, I've been through too many emotions. Oh my goodness. It's been a rough go actually reading this arc. It's been 
horribly emotional for me. Um, I love Knuckle. I love the fight that he had with Gon and him being nice to him and trying to coach him while also not holding back was an excellent fight. Gon pushing himself to the absolute limit again and again and again. Um, this line from Killua, after Gon, after Gon spent up all his energy and passed out because of it, lost because of it, and Killua said, Gon will, t Gon will t take you on again tomorrow. It won't be a repeat of today. Um, and then he says, I'll take on Shoot, you take on Gon. But if you lose without ever giving it your, without even, oh, it says ever. But if you lose without ever giving it your all, I won't forgive you. I'll never forgive you. Killua's loyalty, confrontation between Biscuit and Killua, which I have a lot of feelings on. Oh, I have a lot of feelings on. We're, we're gonna have a really long discussion about all of this in the review. I have to get my thoughts together, but I have a lot of feelings. And then the subsequent fights where they lose. And then Killua decides that he'll protect Gon until he gets his Nen back and then he'll leave him forever. I have so many feelings about this. I'm so upset. I, you should have seen me on my Discord when I was reading this and discussing it. I was a mess. I was such a mess and still am. Honestly, I have a lot of feelings. <sighs> We find out a lot more about the Chimera Ants as well, like how their previous personalities of the people that they ate um, affect them a lot and they even retain some of their memories. We have a lot to discuss on that as well. Uh, we got more of King and he is an awesome antagonist. I haven't even spent that much time with him. I'm still real early on with him, but I'm digging what I'm seeing a lot. Um, Gon and uh, palm date for a while, which I have feelings about. And then we get the infamous fight. I mean, I assume it's infamous. It was for me, that's for sure. With Killua realizing that his brother has had that in his head this whole time, which I, again, we're going to discuss ad nauseum in the review, but a couple of quick thoughts. Um, I'm so glad we have a resolution. I was really afraid that Killua was going to leave us and I was so upset about it. I, I had so many feelings about it. And I'm really happy about this because to me, him, what Biscuit confronted him about and his reaction of actually having this flight instinct and thinking that his loyalty to Gon wasn't enough to override that felt so wrong to me because he's proven, I know he's proven that he will f flee uh, an enemy that is stronger than him. He's proven that throughout the series, I know. But he's also proven over and over again that his loyalty to Gon, Gon, Gon is the most strong thing about him, is the overpowering thing. Totally makes sense that this is true because why did his family let him leave in the first place when we went and rescued him from his family and his family was just like, all right, go, leave, you'll be back. Why, why would they do that? because they had this in place, because they're so manipulative that they wanted to let him leave and then they wanted to have him prove to himself that he would fail and come back to them in thinking, I can't have friends because I'm not capable of it. They're so evil. And then whenever he realized that, he was just like, oh, all right, huh. Good play, guys. He's so used to them being so evil to him and manipulative and gaslighting and horrible that that's his reaction to that. Okay, I'm sorry. <sighs> Again, we're gonna talk about it a lot more. I probably shouldn't go too in depth with it now. <sighs> right. Then we get Kite back. Yeah, right. So there's a lot of stuff about the Chimera Ants that I just find fascinating and I really wanna to talk to you about them as antagonists a lot, even though I know there's still a lot more about them to be discussed. And there's a lot I wanna to talk to you about Killua. There's a lot I wanna to talk to you, I, I, there's a lot I wanna to talk to you about. I originally, I wanted to make this a two video review, but I already have so much that I feel needs to be unpacked. It's just gotta be three. And we're gonna talk soon about all this. <laughs> there's a lot to talk about. 
I'm very overwhelmed by by all the things that Togashi is putting me through rude and all the things that Togashi is making me think about this is a really deep one so we have a lot to talk about um, I am scared to keep reading <laughs> But that's okay, because I'm gonna take a break and I'm gonna get my notes together and I'm gonna I'm gonna review it, I'm gonna do a video, I'm gonna edit the video. It'll be a few days before I get back into it, which will be good because I uh scared. I'm scared. Okay, that was a long clip when I said I'd be brief, so bye. started book four. For some reason, book four is the book that I remember the least of the four that I that I read. Anyway, so book three. Oh, it was wonderful. It was, I, it's good. It's good. I think last time I was fatigued by book two because it just wasn't my jam. And then I went into book three. I decided to push through and it just tainted things for me. And I still enjoyed book three the first time around, but skipping book two this time and just going straight into three was the right choice because I I was able to enjoy it so much. It's still formulaic, it's still episodic, and that's still not my thing, even though that's like a Greek myth thing, so it's not like there's anything wrong with it. It's just not what I like to read. But there's so many great character moments. I already talked about how amazing the character writing is in this, um, but also there's real sacrifices happening here. There's real heroic moments. There's real devastating scenes that we have to live through with our characters. There's real hard decisions that have to be made. And oh my goodness, it's just really, really good. Ah, oh, wow. Um, I mean, like I said, there there is a middle grade that suits me better. Like there's middle grade that I read that I'm like, oh my goodness, this is what I want to read. And Percy Jackson doesn't suit me perfectly, but I guess this time around I'm kind of removing myself from that a little bit more and just enjoying, I mean, I am having a good time. I like this series, but I'm also just enjoying the craft of this series because I really think it's so well written. But anyway, I'm in book four now and this, I'm so excited about. Like I said, it's the one I remember the least for whatever reason, but I love a labyrinth. I love a manator. Manator. I don't even know how to say it. You know what I'm talking about. The the mythological creature that typically guards labyrinth entrances. I love it. I am enjoying seeing characters that used to be low-key enemies now working together and understanding each other. A character that was once a bully and a character that was easy to dislike now has layers and um, a soft side that is still hidden underneath but we get to see glimpses of um, mysteries and a breaking of the pattern in some ways. Um, you know, the, the, the first three books are very similar in the setup and in a lot of ways, and this labyrinth really breaks things up. There's still a prophecy, there's still an oracle, there's still a, a hero that has to take on a, a dangerous adventure and pick people to go with them. It's still a cast of people that we know and are familiar with. So there's still some stuff that's just like every book does this thing, but with the labyrinth, there's something completely new and dangerous and exciting happening. And I don't know, I just love a good labyrinth plot. I just love it. I don't read it very often and I'm so excited to be in this. I don't, did I finish book four? Why don't I remember it at all? all. I don't remember anything about this. Even, I, this is, I mean, it's inter it's information given at the beginning of the book, and I'm going to keep it vague, and I know it's book four, but I feel like it's fine for me to say this. It's heavily implied. We don't actually see the prophecy happen. It's just that the character that got the prophecy relays it to us, so we don't actually get to see it this time, and you can kind of surmise that some information is being held back, but it's heavily implied that the prophecy said that one of the people going into the labyrinth is going to die, and we've established in other books that stakes in this series are real, so I don't know. 
and I know who's going into the labyrinth and I don't know who's not going to come out or how this is going to be resolved. I just feel, I feel the tension. I feel on the edge of my seat. I feel excited to go into this labyrinth that kills people, that that steals people's sanity, that, that torment, like it's terrible. It's terrible and I'm so excited to go. I'm so, so excited to go and I genuinely fear for my characters. I don't know. I'm so excited and scared and I'm it's great. It's great. I'm so excited. I'm having a great time with this series. I'm just it's 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 fun. I think with middle grade I'm able to just kind of let go a lot more cuz with uh, adult books I oftentimes am am I don't know, it's just a different vibe and it's a different kind of enjoyment and I'm just having a lot of time going along the ride with these characters. So I'm really excited. Um I will not finish this book by the end of the week. Oh, by the way, Percy Jackson video, I, I doubt anybody is is looking at that calendar that I posted in a community tab a couple weeks ago and like checking back on it. So I doubt anyone will notice if I'm rearranging my schedule at all, but Percy Jackson is not happening tomorrow, which is what I had on the schedule because I obviously haven't finished it yet and I'm not trying to rush to get a video out at a certain time. So it's being pushed back to next week and I'm rearranging some things. I doubt anybody would notice if I didn't say it. couple of weeks I've been in this really annoying reading mood where I just want to read everything but I can't actually solely focus on anything so I've been reading quite a few things in the background and just talking to you in the forefront of the vlog about the things that I'm reading the most actively but it's kind of come to a head now where I'm a good chunk into quite a few things so for this last bit of the vlog what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna rapid fire update you on a bunch of stuff. This actually isn't even everything. There's one more book that I've been plugging away at slowly, but it gets embarrassing after a while, so you gotta cut it off somewhere. So rapid fire updates. I am near done with Ship of Magic. Um, there are four main perspectives that we're following. There's Malta, who is a young girl trying desperately to, uh, to grow up too fast and causing a lot of headaches for her family because of it. Althea, who was once the daughter of a captain of a ship and because of a number of circumstances, she's now the ship's boy, um, trying to just, to, to just win a name for herself and be accepted and, and prove to herself and to others that she is a worthy ship hand. Um, there's Wintro, who is a priest of Sa, or at least that's his goal, and he's been in training to be a priest, but because of family circumstances, he's been ripped from that, and now he's forced to work on ship hand, and he doesn't like it, and he doesn't want it, and he's fighting for his own future and freedom, and it's not going well for him. And there's Kennet, who I just don't care about. <laughs> so Kennet, oh, he's like the pirate king or something. I just, his perspectives are not interesting me. So those are the main four perspectives. Now we're in the second half and there's so much more happening, but the pacing hasn't changed. Um, so yes, there's a lot more happening in the second half, but the pacing is still incredibly slow. We're still taking, you know, 15 pages to say something that could be said in five, but that doesn't, or in three really, but that doesn't, that's not a deficit to the book. It's so hard to explain. It feels like this could be, like this is a chunker of a book. Could be condensed, it's, it's, oh my goodness, over 850 pages could be condensed so easily, but should it? No, I'd say not. Because even though 
even though everything takes longer to say because of the way Hob is being so introspective and because of how closely she's looking at everything, it only makes it all feel more real and it makes it more engaging and I'm I'm so into almost everything that's happening. I couldn't care less about Kenneth. Um, anyway, rapid fire review. Good job, Murph. I'm gonna rank the perspectives. Malta, easily my top perspective. Especially now that we have this dream box. I won't say anymore. Malta, adore her. I, I'm so heartbroken for how fast she's trying to grow up and I just want her to slow down and I'm so afraid for the kind of messes she's getting herself into. Um, Althea, no, 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 Wintro gets next. I adore him. He's an incredible character and I don't care what's going on with him and right now what's going on with him is scary. But I don't care what's going on with him. I want to follow him. Althea, surprisingly less, I'm less engaged than I thought. She was my number one in the beginning and she's slipping down the ranks. But I'm still interested in everything that's happening with her, just significantly less so. And then Kenneth, he doesn't even deserve to be mentioned. Bottom of the barrel. Black Flame, rapid fire. I'm gonna do better this time. I'm almost half done with it. And I kind of have the same feelings about this as I do about the other two books in the series, which a lot of people say book three is where it all takes off. Book three is like, get through the first three books and then make an opinion about the series. And I feel a lot of the same, but a little bit better in that the characters are fantastic. Uh, it took, I guess it did take a while for me to start caring about the characters in the series book three. Oh my goodness, we get so much time with Ethan and I couldn't be happier about it. Ethan is just one of the best characters I've read um, in a while. I love his power, sass, uh, dry humor, ruthlessness. Ethan's amazing. I've also met the dragon turtle, the draconic turtle, and best character in the series. I've barely met him. Best character in the series. Still not fully invested in the series as a whole, but the characters carry it for me at this point. Started Firestarter. Whoop, there it is. And that's how deep into it I am. I have been just reading little pieces of it and I just hit a point now where I'm like, oh my goodness, I, I'm not, I can't, I can't put this down now. I'm so invested. King is an author that I don't, I have such mixed feelings about because there are certain things that he does that I just really don't like, but at the same time, his character work, it's incredible. He, much like Hobb, his books could easily be condensed. Scenes take so long sometimes, but they're, but, but it works because he writes characters so well. They feel so real. So these scenes that could easily be condensed, I don't want them to be because I feel like I'm getting a window into reality. I'm not reading a book. And it's just, it's really, really impressive. Plus he drops, like some of his lines, sometimes he'll drop a line and I'm just like, why didn't an editor tell him to take that out? But sometimes he drops lines that I'm like, whoa, I need to reflect on that for a while. And there's been a couple of those already in this and he's just he frustrates me but he also astounds me <laughs> anyway um this is a book that so okay so these two people these two adults went to do this paid testing uh for for an experimental drug and they were part of the test subjects that had some significant changes I knew the camera was about to die, yet I had hoped I could get through these rapid fire book reviews, as if I'm good at that. They got, they got, they telepathy was what they got out of it. They thought that it was going to be a really safe experiment. They were misled and they got, they got some psychic abilities. Um, then they got married and had a kid. She is able to light fires um, with a thought. And it's admittedly, unsurprisingly dangerous to have a child who is not very in control of her emotions um, and who is, she's going through so much, poor sweet girl. Um, she, she has this ability that's extremely dangerous, that could easily kill people, that could easily cause serious, serious harm. And she is a child <laughs> so it's dangerous so they're kind of they're on the run charlie and her dad andy are on the run um because there are people who would like to kill them because of the powers that they have 
that's the setup. There have been some, there have been parts of this that it's just like, I, I feel like I can't stop reading now. My plan, when I saw the trailer to the movie, I was like, hey, that actually looks really interesting. There's not a lot of movies that really catch my eye. So I thought, okay, I should read this book. If the movie looks interesting to me, maybe I'll read and watch, we'll see. So I thought I would just casually read the book, see how it tickles my fancy. I hate that phrase, why did I use it? See how I like it, and if I do like it, then, you know, swell, maybe I'll watch the movie. And I'm so into it, I'm so into it. Um, I mean, I'm a little bit over 100 pages in a mass market paperback, so I don't know what that would equate to in a full-size book, but I'm so into it. Spy Family, um, well, Volumes two and three, I feel like I have to speak in spoilers, even though I'm trying to do condensed, bad at it, timestamps to jump to the end if you don't want spoilers. So in volume two, speaking just quickly about it, I love it. <laughs> I love the humor. I don't get tired of it. I don't get tired of Anya and the way she reacts to people. I don't get tired of yours. Um, violent tendencies and all the miscommunications and the ways that Anya helps them. Oh my gosh, do you, oh my goodness, this one. It's just so perfect, it's just so perfect. Anyway, um, in volume two, we're introduced to yours brother, which is uh, something, but I really, really like the, um, the, added element of him being a member of the secret police and Twilight is someone that he knows about and would like to take down if he knew that Yor was married to him. Oh my goodness. Love that added element. In book three, was it book three that we got? I mean, volume three that we got the dodgeball game. I loved the dodgeball game. Actually, I think that was volume two as well. So in volume three, we got this. Oh my golly. We got this adorable scene it was part of the brother thing when he was like well if you're actually married then why don't you kiss and it's like okay sure but i still loved the scene i still loved it um yeah it's just <laughs> and then they hunt they they tracked her oh no no the, dodge the dodgeball wasn't this one no it wasn't <laughs> that's when she saved a kid from drowning which is also a really great scene i'm enjoying everything about these uh, I, I don't know. I have it on the books to do a review for it. I don't really know. It'll probably be a quick one because the same jokes are kind of being recycled, but then just used in a different context. And frankly, I'm not mad about it. <laughs> it's, I don't get tired of it. So I'm fine with it. And according to the way volume three ended, we're about to get a dog, which is going to add all sorts of extra mayhem. So I'm having a great time. I don't know if it's worthy, not worthy. I don't know if it needs a dedicated video. So if I do one, then it'll be pretty short, but um, I, I, I couldn't be having a better time with it. I mean, the number of things, <sighs> this is stupid. I, next week I'm gonna focus up, okay? Next week I'm gonna focus up because look at this, look at the stack of things that I've talked to you about in this vlog. How many of these things did I actually finish? Uh, the volumes of manga, I finished. But as far as books, I finished one. And all these others are currently ongoing. And I haven't even told you about the one other book that I have currently ongoing. Okay, all right, okay. Let's, let's have a talk, because I have a problem. Here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna focus up. Next week, I am finishing Ship of Magic. It, I'm near done. It's going to happen. I will finish Percy Jackson because I'm, I'm doing, I'm having good pacing with that. And is it realistic to say I'm going to, and I'm going to focus on one of these and, and at least make some good, good progress. That seems fair. Okay. That's, that's the plan for next week. It's going to happen. This was a long check-in, who's surprised? So here's the embarrassing number of things that I have been reading, ta-da. But I'm gonna focus up and I'm gonna actually finish something. Sorry about my issues, bye.